Hello gamers, welcome to another DSP video. I do want to say thank you to everyone who watched my DSP Reacts video I put out a while ago. Uh, that was fun to make and I'm glad you guys have enjoyed it so much that you even made comments on that video. So I appreciate it. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this video as well. Uh, so during a Final Fantasy V stream, DSP brings up that at some point he wants to diversify his content. He can't keep gaming, man. He's getting too old for this shit. So he's going to have to reach out. He's going to have to do something else. And I want to know what he means by that. And I'm Because I'm tired of this little surprise on new channel kind of nonsense. At, at this point, he should just say what he wants to do. Because... We already seen the DSP the DSP Reacts channel, which has already floundered and it's kind of plateauing as it is. Uh, whatever boom he thinks was gonna happen has already happened, and it's just gonna maintain where it is now. The only way it's gonna ever increase members members is a uh, bunch of gifted memberships, obviously. But what's he gonna really do once he realizes that once he reduces the amount of content he makes for DSP gaming, what's he gonna offer? That's going to be as successful as DSP Gaming. Because again, that's pretty much the the standard for him of success, is that channel. What other channel is going to reach that same level? DSP Reacts has already kind of not hit that goal, but it's just, but as he said, it's only being supported by memberships and um, DSP Gaming. So both these channels kind of go hand in hand. But if he reduces DSP Gaming to any level... How is that going to uh, support anything else? Uh, is he going to do a politics channel? I don't think he is. I think he's going to just find a way to get out of that idea because uh, if you just see how DSP handles any discourse, you already know he's not equipped for it. Like, look at the Last of Us 2 Twitter uh, fiasco he did. Nothing he said was coherent or consistent. He told the one person that that Last of Us 2 is pushing an agenda. The agenda is these liberal themes, these SJW themes, the SJW agenda. But then he tells someone else, no, I'm not talking about that agenda. I'm talking about this other agenda about the review scores. That this game's getting 10 out of 10s, man. That's the agenda. And he can't really pinpoint what he means by agenda. He tells people what they want to hear. So that's not going to really translate well in a politics channel because it's just going to piss people off that he's playing both sides. And this guy can't handle that. He has a bad time handling conflict as it is on, a, on any level. Once he does a politics channel, this is going to be an uphill battle, especially when people are going to bring up that this dude masturbated on stream. It's just going to be an uphill battle to, for him to, to really cry and pray that people will take this take him seriously which they won't they just won't take his his video seriously if he talks about politics at all uh no matter republican democrat whatever you are whatever dsp is gonna put out you're not gonna take him seriously because he's such a clown he masturbated on stream he he coops about everything under the sun he can't really pick a, a side he wants to sit on and no matter what, people are just going to criticize it anyway. So it's a lose-lose for him. There's no way that that channel is going to take off unless he's intentionally planning on, on profiting off of making stupid points. Which I don't think DSP is even capable of doing that. So I kind of don't feel that the politics channel is in the cards. He might tease it regardless, but I just can't see him committing to it. Uh, so what does that really leave for him to do? The versus the internet video series kind of sucks. The tier maker videos are gonna just lose momentum the more he does it. I feel I feel the damage for for the tier maker has already been done. That food tier maker just tarnished any hype for tier maker in general. The fact that because he said that the one that's gonna happen this Monday is uh, gonna be Zelda, and that's it. That's gonna be the only tier maker we'll get. And that's going to be two hours. Two hours of one topic. Of him just talking. And it's like, you can't really do that with Tear Maker. You're going to do two hours of just one subject? Like, come on. Come on, that's a little ridiculous. Uh, unless he has other plans. But even doing an hour for one subject is, is too much. Uh, so the Tear Maker is already going to be failing on its own. It's going to really need a lot to carry it forward. So, so DSP Reacts, in and of itself, isn't a viable alternative to DSP Gaming. Now, he has Keo Gaming, but he already kind of teased that that might become an archive channel where he uploads the old, lost, 
playthroughs, which I don't even think he's going to do that, to be honest, unless someone makes him the banners he wants for, for that, but whatever. Let's say he does do that. That's already channel spoken for. That's going to be an archive channel. So what's he going to do? Uh, is he going to review games? Well, no, that requires him to play games, and he said he doesn't want to do that in the future. So he needs to really determine what he means by that or just accept that he could just play games forever. Because, sure, he's going to get old and his hand-eye coordination is going to you know, become shit or whatever, but he could kind of make that a selling point for his streams. Like, he needs to stop this, I, I can't be bad at games online because people will make fun of me mentality. Like, okay, people make fun of how you, how, how you suck at games. Okay, just play the game. And he he tries to get into that in some cases, but then pulls out, and in some other in some other places, it's really all over the place on how he feels about how uh, on his skill level of gaming. So I can't see him do anything that is worth of any value because I think this is going to be a financial mistake for him to to just drop DSP gaming on any capacity at any capacity. It's just going to be a terrible decision uh, that I don't think he'll ever recover from. So I don't really know what he means when he's when he keeps bringing up that he wants to to make diverse content in the future. Usually, a lot of content creators try to expand in other kinds of of uh, business ventures, or they try to uh, make uh, specific uh, merchandise, or they try to sponsor streams, or they or whatever. And they do that whenever they feel like it. They don't wait for a specific point in time to do something. Meanwhile, DSP has to. Have everything come out in a rhythmic pace. Oh, it's a new year, so this is when I do a new channel. Oh, this is a, like it, it's these weird, like nonsensical uh, release schedules he wants to do, and he needs to drop this that mentality because YouTube, in of itself, is a very unique platform for a business, and he doesn't really utilize it in a way that is meaningful or interesting. As much as he wants to say that it's kind of just meaningful. Because it's not creative. Everything he does has to be told to him. Like, oh, you should do this, like, just today. He just came up with the Street Fighter VI event name that he was going to do. And it's like, that's not even your idea. The name was from some, uh, some random guy in chat. And will that person get any reward? No, he gets paid in exposure. The best form of currency, apparently, is being paid by exposure. Ask any artist. Or anyone, for that matter, what's their preferred payment? I guarantee you they will always say exposure because they get so much out of it, right? Like, it, it's insane. And, and it's kind of ironic that DSP pays people in in exposure. Meanwhile, he shits on detractors for getting exposure through his content, I guess. Whatever. But he's going to run into this problem more in the future, if he, if he plans to follow through with reducing the amount of content for a DSP game, he's going to run to this issue where he's going to be creatively bankrupt and he's, he's going to have nowhere to go. And that's probably the worst feeling someone can have if they're in a creative field. The moment you run into that wall, that's kind of when you, you know where you are in like skill level in terms of creative thinking kind of deal. Because... You really need a lot of drive and 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 adaptability to really push through. And DSP doesn't really have any of that because everything he has run into, any problem he has faced, has always been solved by just waiting. So he has never really run into an issue where he needs to do something like on the spot. He claims he has, but it's but when you look at it in like hindsight, it's he was always going to get through it through waiting. Like the copyright strikes. Oh, just wait, and it'll just resolve itself because you know the the strike is fake. Uh, so I honestly can't see this diversification of content going to be any positive or successful gain for him unless he really does have a nest egg that he has not been telling us and he's, and he's able to just squander the rest of his life doing nonsense, I guess, uh, because that's where he is in his content, which I also want to discuss his movie reviews a little bit because I, 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 ironically enjoy DSP's film reviews because I love movies. I watch movies. I watch TV shows. It's They're all fun little things I, I do on my spare time, obviously. Watching him just recite his, his thoughts on something like that, like a movie or a show, really shows me how bad this dude is at media literacy. And it's just funny to me. It's always been fun to, to see this dude give out bad takes in his reviews. But the one cardinal sin that his film reviews run into 
immediately is that they're all just reviews that his fans tell him that he should review. They've already seen the movie, and they're telling him to do the review of the movie they've already seen. So they're kind of looking for DSP to validate their thoughts on a movie, and they're probably just, like, watching the review, like, either thinking, he does, he disagrees with me, I'm not watching, or they're just, like, whatever, they're just a vocal minority. But... He, he runs into this issue where he says he doesn't care about views on his DSP Reacts channel. He doesn't care about the YouTube analytics of that channel. He only cares about memberships and uh, and feedback or whatever the fuck. But mostly memberships. Uh, he has the memberships, but suddenly the reviews, the, the view count matters. And it's like, if the view count matters, then just go out of your way to watch something. Like, the thing is th that... The, that film reviews are very tricky because, yeah, sometimes you'll get carried by the algorithm by just filming a mainstream movie or or whatever. But the issue about his film reviews is that there's nothing that really shows that he has a vested interest in, make it in, in reviewing movies or TV shows. It doesn't feel very interesting coming from DSP. It just feels like a layer of uninterestedness. From from the guy, like he watches Suicide Squad. And it's like he only watched it because his fan, his viewers told him to. But when was the last review DSP re did that he went out of his way to see that no one asked him to to, to do a, a video on? Because I would argue the last one was Inception, if I remember correctly. Because as much as we want to say that the Phil reacts that he did in 2016 was his out of the way to, to review something kind of video series. It kind of isn't because he reviewed a lot of mainstream movies like uh, Captain America Civil War. That's a mainstream movie. So of course we're gonna want to know his thoughts on that. Batman vs. Superman, Wonder Woman, all these things that he did back on that channel when it was the King of Hate uh, were all mainstream videos that people are probably already asking him to review. So when is the last review he has done where no one asked him about it and he just kind of did it because he went to see the movie and he did a, a video about it? Not a lot. Like, I have seen so many movies and sure, I, do, I have not done an on-the-spot review about it, but that's because I just am lazy about making videos about this. I, I don't really, you know, think about doing a video on it, though I do have a letterbox that I do some movie reviews on that website. Uh, but what does DSP do? He has a whole video series based on reviews. He has not seen the Super Mario movie yet. Uh, he's waiting for that to become uh, available digitally. But he said he wants to watch it in theaters, but he doesn't have time. Like, it doesn't take that long to watch a movie. And especially now, he could probably go in and have a empty theater to see it. So, it comes down to cost. Oh, I can't afford to go to the movies. Sure, movie tickets are expensive. I'm not going to pretend that they're cheap or anything, but he's running a business that makes money anyway. You you spend money to make money, but don't you want to do that for your channel anyway? Like, don't you want to create content? Like, how does he know that paying tickets to see a movie like this weekend, like, in, like he could go see Guardians of the Galaxy 3, let's say. He goes to see that movie release week. Then he puts out a video. How does he know for sure that video is not going to get thousands of views? How does he know that? He doesn't. You can't really predict what uh, the analytics of a video that you haven't made yet. It's really hard to run into that, to that thought process. And you have seen time and time again, uh, a lot of people who talk to Phil kind of uh, highlight his analytical mind or this is my, his addiction to YouTube analytics. And it's like... You're very driven by this. You need to kind of like stop focusing on that and work on your own content and all that kind of stuff if you truly think your content's going to get the attention. But he just can't because he knows his content sucks. Deep down, if he's willing to admit it or not, he must know that his, ch his content isn't enough to carry any weight for anyone. So he has to either... It's this unwillingness to commit to his own content. He's not unwilling to commit... Spending money to go to the movie theater to see a movie for DSP Reacts. He's unwilling to commit to buy to playing a game that has been negatively reviewed, except for Kalisu Protocol, which he was very driven to play. But he doesn't want to try different games on Game Pass. He doesn't want to risk doing playthroughs on games on Game Pass and then just drop it as he says he would. Like, just go back and, and listen to the hype-up segments 
about the Xbox Series X and Game Pass. He said he could start playthroughs, and if it doesn't get attention, he could just drop it and move on to something else. Why doesn't he just do that? Why not just play Code Vein on Game Pass, play it for a bit, and if it sucks or whatever, drop it and play another game and aim to beat it, and then if it doesn't do well, move to something else. Because Game Pass is pretty much a rental service he's paying for, but he's not really utilizing. All these things are in place for him to make content, and he just doesn't do anything with it because he is so dedicated and afraid to venture out that he wants to focus on mainstream attention. And this is why I don't think any new channel, any new diversification I, uh, thing he's going to do in the future is going to pan out. Because he, he's waiting for something to, to happen that he could just jump onto and hope for the best with it. Which isn't going to happen. Because all, there's all these people that's already outpacing him in terms of content and, uh, cre and creativity. That he's going to be left in the dust, he's, which he already has. So him just waiting for a roundabout way to start a new channel is already meaningless. It's already a losing battle. To the point where it would make more sense to try it now than to try it later where he's going to be fucked if he did so if he reduces DSP Gaming to any capacity. Uh, unless he's misleading us on how much money he truly makes, which is what a lot of people are, are accusing him of. So it just doesn't add up. Uh, uh, just him in a creative industry like this where you really need the drive to really push through and adapt immediately. Uh, all the people I, I watch on YouTube have already experimented with different videos and different styles of filmmaking that you know they're already last they already have a lasting appeal a lasting effect on people like and which always dra pulls in newer viewers like again I'm gonna bring up obviously Mega64 surprise surprise but they make content that either you know as much as old fans may leave and say this is not for me anymore there's always a new viewer base that comes in because they're doing constantly new things. They're always ex expanding and experimenting. Some people appreciate it and stick around. Some people are like, well, this isn't for me and leave. It, it, it's just the nature of the beast. Like, that's how it is when you're making videos on YouTube or just anything in the creative industry. People like certain directors at one point in time. They get older. They realize, I don't like this director anymore. They move on. And DSB can't handle that because he doesn't really have a community that is that... Uh, welcoming or just that interested in his own content they're interested in, in pissing him off if anything or they're just interested in their own little communities that they form in his community it's really bizarre and it's it's just truly fascinating to just look into his chat time to time and just see how how it behaves because it's so bizarre compared to other people's chats as much as dc wants to say his chat's the best chat compared to anyone else it's the weirdest one uh, you have all these weird people that, are, that he just gets pulled into to talk to, but he doesn't talk to anyone else. It's just bizarre. And there's a bunch of LARPers, there's a bunch of trolls, there's a bunch of, like, Derek's in there, Jade's and all this stuff. Like, it's just a bizarre chat room. But it doesn't really mean anything. Because the only thing that people get out, that DSP gets out of his community is that they, they're telling me that they like the content and all this stuff, but it's... But there's nothing that he's ex exercising creatively that makes him even say that genuinely. Because if they're if they're telling DSP they that they he should do this this thing, and he does the thing, and they say we like you did the thing, it's a meaningless compliment because you're just doing what they told you that they wanted to do. If you did something they didn't ask for, and they said I love this, then holy shit, you finally did something. You did something on your own, and the given you the uh the respect for it and that's something that you could expand on but everything dsb has done has been told to him to do by uh, by his own viewers so it's a it's a circular uh system that doesn't go anywhere it just kind of stays stays where it began so he doesn't really know what truly works oh i played jedi uh, survivor because everyone said that i should keep playing it as people in the show were telling him to keep playing it he kept playing it and now he's Kind of enjoying it more, even though it's, it doesn't have a good uh, performance. Oh, some people don't like my Elden Ring run, but people say I should play Elden Ring again, so I'm playing Elden Ring again. Surprise, surprise, he's been getting positive feedback for it because people told him they wanted it. But he's not giving them anything that he didn't ask for that they ended up liking. Like, when is the last time DSP provided something that the viewers didn't ask for and they liked? Because you'll not find it. The last time I could even think about that was KO Gaming, but it's... Uh, 
But that is such a bottom of the barrel idea to make a channel to review games that it's not really groundbreaking or creative because he didn't do anything creative with that channel. There was like, every idea he has put out has just been done by someone else. So his idea of making diverse content in the future is just a joke. And you can only see that with the review series. These Rex just embodies that. But Keo Gaming was the first sign of that, which Keo Gaming, I would even argue, has every right to have been successful, had every right to. But Disney has this belief it's YouTube's fault. Oh, they blacklisted the channel or whatever. But if that channel was so successful and the videos were so successful, why didn't he, why didn't he try to put that back on the other the vlogging channel? Why didn't he try to put it on his gaming channel? Why didn't he try to integrate Keo Gaming into DSB Gaming? Why doesn't he try any of that? No, man, it takes too much time. But if you enjoyed it and they're willing to support it, isn't that worth it then? Like, he, he focuses on, on, the, on the idea that people constantly want to see something. Oh, I, I really want to see this. And, I, and it's, it's, this, it, it's this thing that people, I don't know how to put it, because it kind of runs into this thing that I'm trying to get to where you're watching a show you really like, and it ends. But it's like you want more, but the fact that it ends is is the best part of it because it told a conclusive story. It's it's only natural it leaves you wanting more. But if it keeps giving you more and more and more and more, eventually you'll just be like, okay, this is too much or not interesting anymore because ideas start to run dry. And these big gaming has been running to that issue over and over and over again, where he's just focusing on giving people more content because they keep asking for it, but he doesn't think about the uh, the end result of it. Like, where is it going to naturally go to? Where is these gaming's natural conclusion? Where is it going to naturally lead when people just get tired of it? They're just going to walk away. And it's going to be diminishing returns because the amount of people that are going to come into the channel as they leave is not going to equate evenly. Because if you're doing a lot of new stuff and a lot of creative endeavors and all this stuff, you're going to have a decent ratio of people coming and going. But if you're doing the bare minimum, you're going to have more people leaving and less people coming in where it's just going to be like you're losing more than you're gaining at that point. So I don't, I, I'm very curious to see what, what DSP is going to do with his own fucking content once he runs into that issue, especially when he tries to reduce DSP gaming at any level, which I also would argue that that too may also be a lie because once you're re realistically going to do that, as I said before, jokingly, he's probably going to retire at the meme age of like 63 or whatever the fuck. And that's where he's going to retire because that's the way society has deemed retirement age or whatever. And he's not going to retire at the age that people are now retiring at or whatever the fuck. You know, it's all these complicated and all this kind of stuff, but uh, it's not going to work out for him. And he needs to realize at some point he should s supplement his his YouTube channels with a real life job. He doesn't want to do, but he says that, oh, he'll make less if he does part time. But at some point you're going to, you, you should do that. That way you have a, a, a current job that you know how much you're going to be making consistently. And then you can, sure you might be streaming less, but you might make more money that way as well. So you have to like think about it that way as well. So it's, it's whatever. There's all these factors in it. There's a lot of people that have better takes of this than I than, than me, sure. But it, this is just stuff that's been in my mind that I feel I can I can share in this kind of video. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you guys next time, and uh, I'll try to find another topic to discuss, be it DSP or non DSP related. But again, thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye.